Welcome to the third episode of Platform Me Podcast. In this third episode, we are going to talk to Louis Arjeski, lead architect at Balaclava about how the brand is redefining the meaning of ownership and community, by connecting NFT tags to physical clothing. Balaclava is a cyber-physical stockless game wear brand, bringing the narratives of the gaming world to real life via premium limited clothing. Uh, hello, and welcome to the third episode of the Platform Me Podcast. I'm James from Platform Me, and today I'm going to be speaking to Louis Larichewski from Balaclava. Um, we, he was the, the lead architect at Balaclava. Um, so before, before I start with my, my list of questions I want to put together for you, Louis, um, can you give me a little insight or a little overview um, in, into yourself, introduction to your professional background, personally? Great, great, great James. Uh, Honoured to be here. Pretty much at home here in Porto. I should be visiting Platform Me headquarters. Uh, so yeah, my actually my background is in fashion design. I went to fashion design school and I've been working in the fashion industry across multiple roles from designing all, all the way to owning my own fashion brand for over 10 years. I had a very successful fashion label uh, back in Brazil. Uh, was voted as one of the top five menswear labels in Brazil in 2017. I did fashion shows in Vienna, Vancouver, Sao Paulo, showcasing collections in Sweden, Tokyo. Uh, but at around 2017, 2018, I started to fashion a lot of the things that was that were what's going on that were wrong in the fashion industry, from like bad sustainability practices all the way to the lack of innovation. And I started experimenting with the new technologies, 3D fashion design, and I dove myself deeply into this world of 3D digital technologies. And I completely switched my mindset from a traditional fashion designer, fashion entrepreneur, to a fully digital 3D fashion enthusiast. And yeah, and this is where I am right now, working as an advocate of not only sustainability in fashion, but for innovations and the intersection of technology with the fashion industry to try to solve these big problems that the industry has. So we'll, we'll pick up, I want to talk a lot about um, the 3D and obviously sustainability and the, the, how these connect and the, the connection points, but just generally what, what inspired the, the creation of Balaclava? Yeah. First, um, I believe we were gathered uh, as a group around things that we love, which is obviously fashion and fashion design. So Balaclava is a, is a, a team of fashion mavericks. We truly believe that we are not only the best in the world when it comes to 3D fashion design, design but also in fashion design. We have people who had uh, their own brands for many years or worked for big brands uh, within fashion design departments. Uh, our passion for gaming, uh, gaming has, has been a great part of my life since since the like early 90s from the fourth generation of video games super nintendo the the sega saturn or mega drive all the way to this big esports events and obviously technology we are all passionate about uh, like these new hot topics around blockchain crypto nfts and this group of people this community tried to tie together all of these passions that we have and we decided to create business around the intersection of these three major topics, which is fashion, 3D digital fashion, gaming, and technology, like Web3, Metaverse, Blockchain. To that's create the, a, that's the, sorry to coin, that's the, the, the core DNA of the, the brand itself, would you say, those, those three elements? Yeah, exactly. Our goal, our big mission is to actually create a future-proof fashion brand that is ready for this next iteration of the internet, which is Web3 that will be mostly driven by uh, the metaverse, which is such a trendy topic right now that people are still trying to get a, 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 a grasp around it. Uh, decentralized finance and the tokenization of things like with NFTs and the digitalization also of, uh, of things in general, because we are moving towards more like living our digital lives in the digital space in this metaverse. And I believe that fashion will take a bigger role when dressing our digital avatars, let's say. And we also don't want it to lose the physical element of it. So we create a, a brand that lies in the intersection of digital, we call cyber physical, 
a brand that sells garments that live both in real life, in the physical world, but is also ready for the metaverse. Nice. So how, in, um, in layman's terms, let's say, how does the, the, the NFT um, directly connect with the, with the physical? How, how, do you, how do you work that out as a strategy or what's the offering like to the, to the end client, let's say? Yeah, uh, we look at the NFT as its main value proposition, which is to give proof of ownership of digital assets. Uh, and when linking this to a physical garment, we can basically grant the ownership of a physical garment using blockchain technology to verify that you who purchase that garment on our e-commerce or a brand that has the same strategy on the e-commerce actually owns that garment. And then the benefits go beyond that because once you give proof of ownership using blockchain technologies, you can also, uh, you create a relationship that uh, we, we call it like the CRM uh, 3.0 where you don't actually like connect with a client on a more like email level, but actually it's a, a relationship wallet to wallet because you have the, your client wallet address and then you can reward him, him or, or she with uh, benefits, new garments, early access to other collections. You can create gated communities where these clients that you have belongs to your company as well, and they can engage with other people within the community to help you co-create uh, the brand and engaging on subjects that your brand is revolves around. Um, and also, uh, we foster the secondary market because we, we have seen this almost like gamification aspect of it, where people buy the physical garment and obviously they get the ownership of the digital twin version of the garment. And once they sell the digital asset only, uh, let's say if they sell this digital asset to a celebrity like, I don't know, Paris Hilton or Rihanna, the, the value of the physical garment that they still physically own increases because once they scan the tag that we have on our garments that shows the product as part of the garment, it will state that Paris Hilton or Celebrity X owns that garment. So it increases in value because someone that is famous owns it. So it's basically, it's, it, for us, it works like this. The NFT is a digital product best support that keeps record of uh, who owns the garment, gives proof of ownership, proof of authenticity, because as our brand sits on a more premium category, uh, we're already preparing ourselves for a future where we need to prove that our garments are authentic. And beyond that, also, uh, the, the whole blockchain technology offers transparency when it comes to the traceability of our supply chain. So you can keep track of the provenance, where the garment was made, in which facility, which factory, all the stakeholders involved in the, in the, in the process. So it's really an um, ID, a digital product best part that comes tied with the physical garment. So just picking up on um, your, your earlier introduction in, in terms of how you've seen the, the fashion industry going um, and, and points that you, you've said about obviously the, the community, um, the decisions that, that are made around the brand itself. From a sustainability point of view, I know you guys are, are using um, certain on-demand strategies, so um, you're not mass producing garments along with these digital assets. Was this, was this something that you wanted to push? Was this something that the, the community is, is striving for? What's the, and, and what are the technologies in place to make sure that you're that you, um, sticking to the mission? Yeah, yeah. On, like on-demand operations was something that we had in the strategy since the beginning. We really believe that in the world, we don't need any more fashion products unless people want to. Uh, there's this huge problem now, the biggest challenge that the, the fashion industry faces as a whole is overproduction and dealing with inventory, inventory optimization. And as we want to be a future-proof brand, we started by looking for solutions for technology that will help set up an on-demand process, meaning that we would fake it until we make it. We would create digital garments, sell this digital product, and only produce the physical version of it once a uh, sale is made. So we set up this process. It was quite challenging in the beginning because imagine you go with your a completely different model of production to 
a factory that is used to mass produce garments. <clears throat> and now you tell them that you want to produce one of a kind. And this garment is actually highly customizable. It's quite a, a shock for them because we're challenging their status quo and they have to think about a new like layout plan on the factory, how to uh, actually read the 3D assets that we deliver to them via tech pack, how to translate that into a digital sample because we actually avoid sampling uh, because that's also a big waste in the fashion industry when you produce and carry the 3D asset with rich data all the way to the point of sale to the point where we actually only have the fiscal garment once the sale is made. Uh, we had a lot of challenges when implement that, but finally it's fully realized and it's working. And, and now we want to reach scale, uh, having the potential to extend the complexity of our garments. Uh, so for our next collection, we have like very complex garments like outwear and jackets. Uh, this is the challenge now we were trying to solve how to create very complex garments like outwear in an on-demand model, producing maybe one of a kind or maybe a small batches, but not in, in a mass, mass production line. So this is a challenge. But we're seeing, um, obviously, with the, with the services that Platform E provide and, um, and what we assist brands with and the, the strategy and the projects um, that we can implement with our clients, we, we're seeing a lot of similar, uh, not not exactly similar, but a lot of similar sort of strategies being put in place by brands. Do you think that this way of working is going to be majorly disruptive to the to the fashion industry in general? Is this going to be the future, or is this going to be something that only a few can achieve? What what are you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's going to be a big disruptor in the fashion industry as a whole, because sometimes we think this is it's a bit too far ahead because we think too much on the made to measure or producing one of a kind garments. But if you think that like producing small batch productions or doing pre pre orders, uh, sales, it is actually a model of on demand production that a lot of the big fashion houses or even, uh, fast fashion companies, they work on it. And so it's a way to change from mass production. That is not a big disruption, but it's something towards on demand. So I think we'll get there and other industries, they already do. If you look to like automotive, automotive industries, they, they work on the on demand model. You don't see cars like with huge stocks of cars that are not sold and end up on end view. This is mostly happening in fashion. The so touching up or going back to Valaclada. So I want to, I want to talk a little bit about um, current projects, what's coming in the future is that I don't, obviously I don't want all the, the, the inside secrets at the minute, um, when, but you can tell me that when we're not recorded. But what, what's, the, what's the plan for the future for the brand? What, what are the projects that you're working on at the moment? I know obviously you were talking about uh, more complex builds and more complex garments, but what's, what's going on now? What can, what can we do now? What can we see now? Yeah. Um, two months ago, we launched our Alpha collection. It's the Infinity collection, the coll collection that you currently see on the website. And this collection, we call it a beta collection uh, because it's our staple collection that we want to use as a way to test not only our business model, but also get feedback from our community, for the, from the people around the Valaclava clan, the Valaclava community that we call. Uh, and also uh, do the setup at the factory level, so everything is work like well for now, which is the, our second step, uh, go like very successfully and in a smoothly way. Uh, and this will be our big launch with the Call of Duty franchise. We just partnered up with the, uh, one of the Activision's main IPs, which is Call of Duty, probably one of the most played games in the world. And we are, the team is designed a collection inspired by this, Call of Duty Road, it's a first person shooter, very military inspired, but we are taking these elements and bringing to the stylish fashion forward world. So we are creating this super stylish collection of ultra limited apparel that will carry a lot of the Call of Duty elements, a lot of military inspirations, camos, outwear, uh, very complex like track pants. It's, it's looking super cool. I cannot wait to, to share with you. Um, uh, and this will be ultra limited. We'll have four designs and each design will have a run of 300 units each. So this is going to be ultra rare garments that people 
who buy it first will get their hands on it. Uh, but if they miss it, they'll never find it again because this is one of our strategies as well, to create collectible garments that sell out fast. And once they are sold out, you cannot find any more only by uh, trading or on the secondary marketing, secondary market or yeah, things like that. So obviously away from um, your guys' website and the, the, the online store itself, how, how, do I, how would I get involved in the community? How would I know about these drops? How do I, how, how do I get to know first? <laughs> Yeah, like in Web3 community is a big element of brands and the projects that are born within the Web3 context. And for Balaclava, it's not different. Maybe the, the thing that different, differentiates us is that uh, we don't revolve around the hype, which most of the NFTs they do. Uh, they create this project, they create community, they build a lot of hype around these NFT collections, digital collectibles only to drop these. And then, yeah, they create a community around what has been sold and the people who are buying for flip, who have all these terms around the NFT communities. But for Bola Club, it's, it's a bit different because we don't, we don't have a white list. We don't do minting. Actually, when you buy a garment, you get your NFT. So people in the community are not there just because of the hype or for speculation. They are there because they really like fashion, technology, 3D fashion, and most of all, gaming. They, they like to sit around and discuss around these topics and get involved with the brand. And this is one thing that we do uh, quite well, is to engage with the community to get feedback on the designs. Uh, because the idea for us as well, like our motto as a fashion, fashion designers working at Balaclava, is to debunk the myth of a brand that is born with a superstar designer. We don't believe that the future relies on like one creative director creating a brand and dictating what people should wear, but actually people having the right to decide what they have to, they want to wear and actually being part of the creative process. So we not only bring these people within our community to co-create with us, but we also offer the element of customization in our point of sale, in our e-commerce, where actually when you go buy our garment, you can make it your own. You can change your prints, change the design elements like we have the base there we have the hoodie we have the jacket we have the pants but the pink the prints the colors uh, it has pockets no pockets if it's short it's, it's longer it's it's up for you to choose and this creates an extra level of uniqueness you make a garment that's already scarce rare even more unique you make it your own the so, so obviously the, the the current partnerships that, that you're forming, forming um, and the current businesses that you're looking to work with, is that are you are you going to be focusing on uh, not from a, an audience, just an audience point of view, just gaming and NFTs and things like that? Are you open to working with other brands? Are you open uh, to to obviously assisting with this strategy with other brands and building and building other projects maybe outside of gaming, but in different sectors or different industries? What's the what is, is is that too much? Is that too much of a, of a broad question or a bigger plan? But what's the? No, I think I, I think I got you. Uh, yeah, th there's two ways to look at this. Uh, uh, one is we we're actually have been in approach a lot by brands, especially other NFT projects, who also want to offer the digital uh, physical element as a utility to their NFT communities. If they come to us uh, because we already developed this. We already have the launch pad done for Balaclava, they want to pretty much recreate what we have done uh, from the 3D digital fashion design all the way to linking the digital twin, the NFT with the physical garment using uh, the tags that we create in partnership with a startup here in Portugal called Uniqueness, uh, all the way to the on-demand operation, because this is the hardest for these brands. They know the suppliers, but the suppliers always request a MOQ, a minimum order quantity to produce the garments. So they actually have to produce like quite large batches of garments. And for them, they, uh, because the NFT owners of these brands, they want to trigger the, or claim the physical garment whenever they want. The factory needs to be ready to receive an order whenever the client wants that physical garment. So we have that set up. So we have these brands and projects approaching us uh, for us to uh, either consult or pro develop the, the process and the products for them. 
For now, we are saying no to this project because we are really in build mode for Balaclava and we are now getting a lot of traction. So we are super excited with Balaclava and want to keep focus. Focus is always important. But the other angle that we have on this uh, partnership and projects that we are not only uh, looking out for it, but also being approached uh, to and get, we are saying yes to uh, our metaverse uh, activations. Uh, for example, we, we are now developing something with Snapchat in partnership with Skin Invaders, where we are recreating oh, the already done 3D garments of Alaclava and exporting these as AR filters. So people will have access to the uh, Balaclava garments on Snapchat as filters. So you can actually wear these uh, on a, a digital environment via AR. Or other projects like Block Wars, Project Kepler, both are metaverse experiences. One is uh, more Asia focus. Uh, uh, ba they're based in Japan, uh, Block Wars. And they created this social uh, metaverse platform that revolves a, a, a lot around fashion. People can buy and, and sell fashion within this metaverse. And we are being the first brand to activate with them in this, uh, uh, in this metaverse. And then Project Kepler is a more hyper-realistic metaverse experience that we are also announced an official partnership with them where we have Balaclava within the experience so people who buy the physical garments, they have the same digital assets and they can, uh, via their wallet, take this digital garment and use in this metaverse that I, uh, that I mentioned, but also on uh, filters uh, in Snapchat. And our goal is to amplify that because we, we don't see uh, one big metaverse being made anytime soon, but we will actually have an infinite number of little metaverses that are all connected and inter interoperability here is key. People need to be able to use their assets in multiple uh, experiences uh, and we are trying to solve that by partnering up with different uh, metaverses that uh, move our goal towards this cyber physical experience where people experience physical but also digital as an extension. So a lot of work going on. Yeah, a lot of work. <laughs> so in, in terms of the, uh, the product passport, how do you link the, the product passport to the physical garment itself? Yeah, this is something that we are very proud of to develop this uh, technology, this link between the physical and the digital. So we work with this company here that I mentioned called the Uniqueness and they create these tags that are super unique. And they're actually a design element in our garments, so client cannot remove this tag. And the tag contains not only an NFC chip you know, inside, carrying the, all the information, uh, but also a, what we call the chaotic visual code that people, they, once they get the garment, they download our Valaclava app and they use the app to scan the tag, both the NFC and the, with the camera, the visual code on top of it, which is completely unique. It's different from each tag and it's random. So it, it, we give like two layers of authentic, authentic, authentication in this uh, tag. And then within our app, the product passport opens up showing the exact image of that phys the physical garment, the scarcity of the garment. So let's say that James bought the first hoodie of the collection of 300 units. It will say that you own the hoodie number one out of 300. It will also obviously state the ownership that who owns the garment, like James Murray is the on, owner, owner of this garment, the provenance or the traceability of that garment, also a link to the OpenSea NFT, the digital version, so you can keep track of the sales on the secondary market of your digital asset, all the way to the access to our Discord community where the magic happens. And this is where uh, there is an open forum for changes within certain products within the brand itself. Is it is yeah. just where the majority of the community lives? Exactly. That's where our community lives. That's where we engage. We play, we, we play games all the way to co-creating new designs, thinking about the next drop, the next partnership. And it's also where we keep our community update, uh, updated with our roadmap and our future developments. Superb. 
So um, there are usually two questions um, that, that I ask at the, the end of the, the conversation that we have, um, just to, to wind down. So the, the first of the questions we usually ask is there a, is there a brand out there that you're personally impressed with with what they're doing or um, but from the the conversation it seems to to me like you're working with literally everybody and anybody uh, on on a uh, a range of different areas. So is there a specific partner that um, that, that you think is is doing really impressive things, has worked really well, is um, is leading in their in in their specific area? Would you say? Yeah. Okay, I can split this answer in two. First, a brand that I'm impressed by and I've been following since their genesis is obviously Artifact that was recently bought by Nike. And I'm impressed because they are taking this whole concept really like mainstream and in a large scale. Uh, but, but the project that I, I'm, I really admire, it's actually the Prada time capsule. Not only because I'm a fan of Prada, the Prada brand, but also because I see there uh, uh, like a real uh, purpose and potential to actually prove that connecting fashion, digital fashion, and uh, NFTs or blockchain can be done in a meaningful way. Because they are launching these monthly collections of digital NFTs. You buy a physical garment, and then you can claim the physical version of the garment and they also use pretty much also the same strategy that Palaclava is doing. Not sure if they are linking the physical with the digital. I don't think so. But they actually have uh, behind them the Aura Consortium, which is a, a, a consortium, a group that is focusing for, or providing this connection between uh, physical garments uh, and uh, product passports using blockchain technology. So I think they will use this uh, pretty soon. Uh, but also the coolest thing is that they use stock fabrics to create these uh, NFT drops. So each garment uses uh, fabrics that were used in collections from a decade ago. So this is super cool because every uh, month they drop something that is quite unexpected and carries an element of heritage and also sustainability because they are using repurposing stock fabric. And also on each garment, you see uh, there's a print on the back that states the month and the number of the drop. So it, it, it brings also this connection of the, the scarcity, the collectible side of things. So I really like this project because I think they can take this to inspire other brands for just as well, as we are aiming with Vala Club as well. Super. So the, the, the final question, um, what advice would you give to, because there, there are quite a lot um, that, that watch what platform you're putting out in terms of material, obviously uh, the, the social posts and things that we do. We have a lot of students, a lot of people starting out or maybe junior positions or interns within um, fashion companies. What, what advice would you give your younger self um, to, to maybe uh, get to where you are or um, if they're having the same feelings as what you had when you were younger in terms of where the fashion industry is going and the things are being done, what advice would you give a um, y younger you? Yeah, I think every fashion designer, especially when we are younger, we have this innocence that allows us to pretty much have this like antenna to grasp what is to come, the new things, the newness. Uh, so one advice that I would say is not to lose this innocence and curiosity curiosity about the new, especially when it comes to other industry. And this is something that the fashion industry is a bit old fashioned. They are very close and they don't look too much for to what is happening, for example, on the on technology side or even finance. So my advice would be for fashion designers, fashion design students or fashion business students, textile designers, students, textile engineers, you should look for inspiration outside the fashion industry, especially within uh, engineering and technology so we can learn new models of production to fix what is wrong with ours uh, and also to technology to understand more what is available what are their tools that are out there that we can use to create meaningful products that customers really want to buy and that are future proof because I don't think customers are really interested and neither should we as fashion designers 
um, care too much about what is the next print print of the season. Will uh, uh, tiger, zebra, animal print will be high, uh, will be in or out? Uh, I don't think we should care about that and really try to fix these major problems that the industry have. So uh, more practical tips will be learn 3D, uh, learn about Web3 and the possibilities uh, there. Uh, visit a factory, learn how a factory operates from product development all the way to shipping to understand the whole uh, supply chain and try to connect all of these dots, see what is wrong, what can be fixed and what you can do to fix it. Nice. Well, thank you for all the information, all the answers and obviously a bit more background on um, Valaclava. It was an absolute pleasure to have you, Louis. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are receiving links and uh, notifications and this has been recorded. And we did try to go live, but we did have some, um, some technical issues. I'm sure everybody uh, has had the similar issues within digital meetings and stuff during, during the pandemic. So um, we do apologize. You can follow Platform E across all platforms uh, and the website to get updates on not only this episode, uh, but future episodes to come. Again, thank you, Louis. Thank you, James. It was an honor. And if you want to know more about Balaclava, obviously you can join us either on Discord or visit our website. We have our full information, non-disclosure. Everything is, is there. We will post some links um, or attach some links to all, all sites and everywhere that this, this podcast will be displayed. But well, thanks again, Louis. Thank you. Thank you.